Welcome back. What I want to do in this video is I want to explore something that we didn't do in the last few videos. In the last few videos, what we did is we um, is we looked at the general physiology of what each of those complexes in the in the respiratory chain did. And so let me go ahead and, and write them right here. So the first one we had was, and I'm just going to abbreviate them, but the first one was complex. And actually, let me actually go ahead and write the names just so you get some experience in seeing them. The first one was NADH dehydrogenase. So that's our first complex, right? The second complex was succinate dehydrogenase, right? That was complex two, right? Our third complex was complex three, and that was that was cytochrome C, oops, cytochrome C ubiquinone oxidoreductase, right? That was complex three. And then our last one was cytochrome C oxidase. And these are our four complexes in the respiratory chain, right? These are the four complexes. Now, what we didn't talk about in the last part, or the last few videos was, is that some of these complexes pump protons. They pump protons. And actually, if I was to draw the membrane, in fact, what the membrane I'm drawing is the inner membrane, is the inner membrane. So this is the inner membrane of the mitochondria. And so let's say that this out here was the outer membrane of the mitochondria. So in here, this is what we call the inner, inner membrane space. It's basically the space between the outer membrane. So this is the the outer membrane of the mitochondria. Recall that the mitochondria is a double membrane organelle. And that's the inner membrane space between the outer and inner membranes. And then this is the matrix. This is the mitochondrial matrix in here, right? And actually, this is where things like beta oxidation occurs. Um, there's lots of things that happen in here. Um, um, the, uh, basically, um, uh, pyruvate carboxylase occurs in there. There's lots of processes that occur in the mitochondrial matrix. Um, but ultimately, what we're going to have is, is we're going to have these enzymes, with the exception of one, oops, are going to pump protons into the inner membrane space. Okay, And we're not going to go into really the, uh, the, 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 the whole picture in this video, but we're at least going to get some of the picture. Now, what I want to show you is that NADH dehydrogenase, or we could also call it NADH ubiquinone oxidoreductase, and I'll do this in green. This is going to pump four protons. So for every dehydrogenation of NADH, uh, this enzyme complex one is going to pump four protons from the matrix into the inner membrane space. And in fact, what you'll find is that the, the, the complexes that pump protons they all pump them in this direction. In other words, it's a vectorial uh, pumping of protons. It goes in a, it goes in one direction and it goes into the inner membrane space. If we look at succinate dehydrogenase, what you'll find is that it does not pump protons. So succinate dehydrogenase does not pump protons. And if we go to complex three, complex three also pumps four protons. So complex three pumps four protons, right? And cytochrome C oxidase pumps two protons. This pumps two protons. So ultimately, what have we done? Well, there, 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 there is, as long as you're supplying, as long as you're supplying NADH and FADH2 into the respiratory chain, you're gonna be pumping protons. So every time an NADH comes in, four protons get pumped into the inner membrane space. And while succinate dehydrogenase does not directly um, produce or, or pump protons, the ubiquinol that's produced goes into complex three 
and then that pumps four protons. So ultimately FADH2 does contribute, and then cytochrome C oxidase pumps two protons. Now, what have I done here? Well, I've done several things, and let me scroll over a little bit so I have room. I've done several things. Number one, I've made a pH gradient. So what have I done? Well, I've made the inner membrane more acidic, right? I've made the inner membrane more acidic, right? I've also created a concentration gradient. Let's put G for gradient. I've made a concentration gradient, right? If I am continuing to pump protons into the inner membrane space, then by default, the concentration gradient says, well, the, the protons are, because there's more protons in the inner membrane space now, they're going to want to come and rush back into the matrix, right? So I create a concentration gradient. The other gradient that I make is a charge, a charge, a charge gradient, right? I make a charge gradient. So if I'm pumping more protons into the inner membrane space, then that part becomes more positive. And so as a result, um, the inside, so in other words, this, well, let me do this in a different color. This side is becoming more positive, right? If I'm pumping protons in, and this side's becoming more negative. So the positive charges are gonna be attracted to the negativity that's inside the matrix, and they're gonna wanna come back in. And it turns out that there is a protein that these protons can move through to get back into the matrix. And that protein, which I'll do over here, and we're not going to go into the excruciating detail on this protein. Actually, let me, let me take this, move this over, move this over, and extend this out. And the protein that they rush to is called, and this is not what it looks like, but it's called ATP, ATP, running out of room, synthase, okay? So the protons, all these protons that get pumped into the, into the, into the inner membrane space have a propensity by a pH, a concentration, and a charge gradient. They have a propensity to run through ATP synthase and move back into the matrix. And then the cycle just repeats over and over again. So the more NADH and FADH2 come in, and the more you increase the ubiquinol pool, the more protons are pumped into the inner membrane space. And then they have a gradient, and they move back into the matrix through a channel in ATP synthase. And as this is being done, and we'll go into more detail on this, ADP combines with a phosphate, and you form ATP, right? You form ATP. So, um, the ultimate purpose, the ultimate purpose of, um, of the proton pumping is to power ATP synthase. And it turns out that what happens is, is um, as, you, as you move protons through the channel in ATP synthase, this thing called the rotor rotates. And as it rotates, it synthesizes ATP. And it turns out it, synth it rotates. For every, for, every, uh, for every proton that moves in, it rotates 120 degrees. So the rotation of ATP synthase produces ATP, ATP, and that's called rotational catalysis. So if we come back here and we think about the big picture, right? We've already gone through glycolysis. We've done the TCA cycle. We've done beta oxidation. So now here's the ultimate question. What is the purpose of NADH and FADH2? And here's your answer. The ultimate purpose is to funnel into the, in, into the respiratory chain so that protons can be pumped and the protons can power the synthesis of ATP. This right here is your ultimate goal. You have to have ATP to live. That's what you're going for. So the ultimate purpose of these reduced cofactors is to funnel into the electron transport chain to cause pumping of protons that creates a gradient in the inner membrane space and so you can power ATP synthase. And that's the ultimate goal of metabolism, at least catabolism that is. And, and there are some anabolic reactions that produce NADH, but it's not very common. So the purpose of catabolism is to generate these reduced cofactors to power ATP synthase. 
So in later videos, and actually the next video in here, we'll probably look at the structure of ATP synthase because it's a very important structure. Usually you don't have to worry too much about the structure of proteins, but we'll look at the structure of it. And in the video after that, we'll actually go into the function of ATP synthase and how it actually rotates and synthesizes ATP. See you in the next video.